Okay, so the first thing we're gonna need uh, for drawing the Lewis structure of elements is to know the number of valence electrons for any main group element. So uh, we already talked about it and uh, basically what we said that in, is that, that the number of valence electron in the main group elements equals the number of group. I mean, the number of group which ends with A capital. So group 1A has one valence electron, group 2A has two valence electron, group 3A has three valence, and so on. Group 8A has eight valence electrons. Uh, exception is helium. Helium has only two valence electrons and is satisfied with two electrons. So it does not need to reach eight electrons. So let's, uh, before we start to the compounds, to draw the Lewis structure of the compounds, let's draw the Lewis structure of the element. Because if we first learn how to draw the Lewis structure of element, then we can connect the two elements and basically make the Lewis structure of the compound. And for that, we first draw the number of valence electrons that each element has around the element as a dot. So look at this periodic table. Hydrogen, for example here, we know is group 1A, so it has one valence electron. And we just put the dot uh, in one side of it. It doesn't matter really what side. Here they chose to put in the right side. You can put in the left side, you can put in the top, you can put in the bottom. Does not matter, but make sure no corner. You should not put in the top corners or bottom corners. So make sure just put it the left, right, top, or bottom of the element. That's the only important part we should uh, notice. Here, so hydrogen one valence electron. We have lithium is group 1A one valence electrons. Beryllium two valence electrons. Boron three valence electrons. Beryllium two valence. Boron three valence. Carbon four valence. So we start from one side basically and just putting the dots. Uh, and usually it's better to uh, start from one side and uh, after, for, uh, like here we start with lithium on one side then it doesn't matter really if you put the second in beryllium in the top or in the other corner. For boron, we put the third one and the other dot in the left side here and then in the carbon we put the fourth one in the top. Um, usually it's better to first uh, put each electron in one side. I mean, each, I mean, one electron in each side of top, bottom, left, and right, and then uh, start pairing them up. So here for nitrogen, we start pair them up. For oxygen, for fluorine, and for neon, we have eight valence electrons. The maximum electron that you can put around each element is eight electrons. So you cannot put more than eight electrons around each element. Unless there is an exception that I'm gonna talk about it. So, uh, so let's look at the neon. So neon, as I said, has eight valence electrons and Two are in each corner of it. I talked about hydrogen and beryllium here. We put two uh, valence. 
So let's do a here what question we can write about it. Write Lewis dot structure for the following elements. So please pause the video here and try to draw the Lewis dot structure of these elements and then continue and see if you got it or not. So for this one, we first find the number of valence electrons, which is associated with their group number. And then we put the electron as dots around them. So that's basically the answer for them. Okay, now let's see how we can draw the Lewis structure for compounds. In drawing the Lewis structure for compounds, the first question we should always ask is, is the compound ionic or molecular? Another name for molecular is covalent. What this question reminds you? Yes, this is the same questions, question that we ask in the naming compounds. So here also you name your ask the same question. Is this molecular ionic or, uh, this is, is this compound ionic or molecular? Ionic compounds are metals and non-metals. It's important to know that they transfer electron. It's like a, you, when you donate a blood, you transfer it from you to somebody else at the end, right? So it's the same. In ionic compounds, we donate, we transfer electrons. We cannot return basically that blood because we already donated it. Okay. In the molecular or covalent compounds, is made of non-metal and non-metal, and they share electron. So the bond that is between here, carbon and oxygen, which are both non-metal is sharing electron. It shows that they share electron between them. Before we continue, you should also know about the octet rule. In drawing the Lewis structure, uh, which we, I, I mean, if you remember, I said that my, uh, neon was the element that had eight electrons around it, two in each side. So our destiny in making, uh, I mean, or drawing the Lewis structure of compound is that we want ultimately eight electrons around each element. So we want in drawing the Lewis structure, eight electron around each element. So this is called octet rule. I will explain it more in the next slides. So let's draw the first Lewis structure for ionic compounds. So Lewis structure for ionic compounds, uh, we first should draw the Lewis dot structure for each element. So potassium is group 1A and is ionic because it's metal and non-metal and chlorine has seven valence electrons because it has, it is in this group 7A. So whenever we want to draw the Lewis structure, we just show that, we just show that electron is lost. So potassium losing electrons, always remember that metals lose electrons and non-metals gain electrons, that's really important. So here, potassium losing electron and chlorine gains that electron. So potassium donates its electron, potassium donates its electron, and chlorine gains the electron. So that's the final Lewis dot structure for the ionic compound KCL. So if in, in the exam I ask you to draw the Lewis structure for KCL, this is the answer for it. Just imitate this one. Whenever an element losing electron, we know that it becomes positive or cation, right? 
if you remember we said that cats are positive and cute right so cation so potassium becomes cation becomes positive and chlorine gains electron be is become becomes an ion chlorine becomes an ion so you should make sure show a electron around the chlorine that shows that it reached the octet rule but for potassium or positive uh, positive uh, charge you don't need to show electron because it's already lost its last electron in the valence shell okay so that's the make sure you use a bracket for negative charges and put a negative charge on top of them so the ultimate thing for the compounds so uh, is that each element in the compounds at the end should reach octet rule and should become like a Nobel gas like Nobel gas so a structure so potassium last electron it became 18 electron so it's like an argon electron configuration and chlorine was 17 electron it gained electron and became 18 so this is also it reached the Nobel gas for of argon the next thing you should pay attention is that the charges of the ionic Lewis structure should cancel out each other so here is the positive charge and negative charge cancelling out each other so make sure you pay attention to it okay let's practice so draw the Lewis structure of the followings please pause here and then come back uh, I mean whenever you are done and continue the video here and uh, let's start with MGBR2. So let's draw the first to the draw the Lewis dot structure for magnesium. We know it in the group 2A, it has two valence electrons, and bromine has seven valence electrons, and we have two bromine here. We have two bromine. So magnesium losing two electrons and two bromines each gaining one electron and each of them will be happy so look at here magnesium magnesium losing two electron you might ask okay how i know how many electron is missing we know that based on what we learned in the nomenclature that group 1a and 2a and 3a always have only one type of charge only they are plus one for group 1a uh, two plus for group 2a and three plus for three plus i mean for the group 3a so that's one in a kind of a uh, trick here so you already know that magnesium is only two plus always so that's mean that it's losing two electron and we have two bromine here because the subscript is two so each of bromines gain one electron so you can see that we have two negative charges and we have two positive so they cancel out the charges that's the correct Lewis structure dot structure for mgbr2 let's do potassium potassium uh, we have two potassium is losing two electrons two potassium and sulfur gains two electrons so you can basically uh, draw the Lewis structure or the structure for ionic compounds and Al2O3. We have two alumina because the subscript is two. The alumina has a charge of three because it's group 3A. Also, based on the naming rules, the cross rule, we know that the subscript of oxygen is a charge of alumina and subscript of aluminum is a charge of oxygen so this is always work for the uh, ionic compounds the cross rule so remember the cross rule and so aluminum losing three electron and oxygen gains 
to each oxygen gains two electron. So if you have two alumina is six plus, and then we have three two minus is six minus. So they finally cancel out each other. So 